Welcome to another lecture on the calibration curve and B. Lambert's law. I thank you for subscribing to my channel. I am impressed with your subscription. I appreciate all of you. For those of you that like, comment, and share, I want to say a very big thank you to every one of you. Today we want to look at the calibration curve and B. Lambert's law. Calibration curves are used in analytical chemistry as a general method to determine the unknown concentration of a substance in a sample called the analyte. The determination is made by comparing the sample with a series of standard samples whose concentrations are known. The concentration of the substance to be measured leads to a change in the analytical signal or instrumental response which can be indicated by a calibration curve. In most cases, a linear relationship results when ordering the instrument response against the concentration of the standard. The Lambert law is a law that we use in calculating the concentration of a sample through the Bia Lambert equation. The objectives of the study. By the end of this lesson, the student is expected to prepare standards for a calibration curve, draw a calibration curve, find the concentration of the unknown from a calibration curve, list the applications of a calibration curve, and calculate the concentration from the Bia Lambert's law. How do we determine the concentration of a sample from a spectrophotometer? We use what we call the calibration curve, and or we can also use the Bia Lambert's law. What is the aim of a calibration? The main objective of a calibration is to determine the concentration of a substance in an unknown sample. Though there are other reasons, like why calibration is very important, to ensure good analytical results, for quality assurance, and for procedural regulations. When making solution for a calibration of Know that each solution can be made separately, but it is a very tedious method. We can also use serial dilution, where we make a stock solution and dilute from that stock to prepare the other solutions. To prepare a calibration curve of 1 to 5 ppm from a stock solution of 1000 ppm copper, weigh 1.000 gram of copper to sulfate pentahydrate. CuSO4.5A2O and dissolve in distilled water and dilute to 100 mL. mark. Pipette from that solution 0.5 mL and add distilled water of 99.5 mL to make a concentration of 5 ppm. Also pipette 0.4 mL and add distilled water of 99.6 mL to make a concentration of 4 ppm. Pipette 0.3 mL, add diluent mL of 99.7 to make 3 ppm. Pipette 0.2 mL, add 99.8 mL of distilled water to make 2 ppm. And you pipette 0.1 mL, add 99.8 9 mil to make 1 ppm. It is important that we take note of how we prepare. That is what causes this error in propagation. From this, we have prepared our 1 to 5 ppm concentration of copper. When we have finished preparing our solution, the concentration that we needed, we will read the absorbance of those solutions using AAS or any of the equipment of our choice. We have prepared the solution just as is shown in this table now. This researcher has prepared five solutions. And then he also prepared 
a sample with unknown concentration. That is the sample he wants to find the concentration. The researcher wants to find maybe the concentration of copper in a, in a water sample. He has to get that his sample. He will plot the absorbance against concentration graph as shown here. There is a, a, a graph here, absorbance against concentration. From that graph, you will read it. It could be a straight line graph as shown here. Not all calibration curves are straight lines. But from what he has plotted there is a straight line graph. Now he has gotten the absorbance of the unknown sample. Assuming the absorbance of this unknown sample is at 0.35. That observance can be read because you have in your graph already. And then you can read that absorbance. You will now take a straight line from that place to join with that your calibration curve. You rule a line to join to that calibration curve. And then you rule it down to this part of the concentration. From there, you have read the concentration of the unknown sample. Now, if the concentration of your unknown sample is not within this calibration curve range, what you do is either to redilute and recalibrate, or you concentrate and recalibrate until you get your sample from your curve. You don't assume that, ah, if I extend this curve now, I will get my sample. It is very important that your sample that you don't know, you should have the absorbance within your calibrated uh, range. What are the uses of the calibration curve? The calibration curve are used in the analysis of liquids and the areas of application are not limited to analytical chemistry. It can be used in biochemistry, pharmaceutical chemistry research, or in neuroscience, even in environmental works. In, for example, the, the determination of heavy metals or pesticides in water or in soil. In environmental work, monitoring. In neuroscience research, it can be used to calculate the concentration of signal chemicals in brain fluid. The quantity of active drugs and other components can be measured in pharmaceutical samples, and it can be used to guarantee the quality of food and drinks for the food industry. How to calculate for concentration from Bialamba's law? One thing we must do is that we will use the information in the problem statement to determine what variables are given and what variables need to be solved for. Secondly, we will use the Bialamba's law equation and rearrange it if needed to solve for the missing variable. The Bialamba's law states that for a given material sample, part length and concentration of the sample are directly proportional to the absorbance of the light. And the equation says A is equal to epsilon times concentration times part length. A is absorbance. We have this equation. A chemist has a sample of adenine with a molar absorbance of 0.67 at a wavelength of 260 nanometer. The molar absorption coefficient at 260 is 7100 per mole per cm. The path length of light is 1.00 cm. What is the concentration of the sample? We will now find concentration. And to find concentration, C is equal to A over epsilon A. That means absorbance divided by the product of epsilon and path length. Put that into your equation, the values given. At the end, you will have 9.4 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 mole. By doing that, you have calculated for the concentration. You can also calculate for molar absorptivity using the same formula by making the molar absorptivity the subject of the equation.
question. What are the study questions? From these study questions, you can calculate using the following results to calculate get the result for absorbance. You draw a calibration curve and find out the concentration of the unknown. That is question one. And then he four uses of a calibration curve. The second question there is for you to calculate calculate for the concentration why the absorbance the molar absorption sub, uh, coefficient the path length is given. Thank you for listening to the end of this equation. I thank you for subscribing to this channel. I appreciate all of you. Share this video with your friends. My students, study this video. It will help you. Thank you very much.